Hey, what's up everyone? It's Griffin here. So around three weeks ago, I posted a video speaking about exchange traded funds, ETFs, right? And how over the past couple of years on the channel, well, we've actually covered many different ETFs that target various different facets of the market from broad market funds, dividend funds, and even more sector specific ETFs. And so I actually thought it would be productive to go back to those old videos, sometimes a year or two, even three years old, and highlight some of these ETFs to see, well, where are they right now? Especially considering the fact that the market has changed quite a bit over the past couple of years. Definitely make sure to check out that first video if you haven't already. We covered some broad market ETFs like the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, and then some more sector specific ETFs like clean energy, the ARK ETFs, as well as Canadian REITs. Speaking of real estate investment trust, by the way, I'm working on a full investing in REITs video that should be out over the next couple of weeks. So make sure to turn on the bell notification so that you're notified of that upcoming video. Now, as a side note, what I'm actually really enjoying about this ETF series is that, well, to make it, I'm revisiting these older videos that I've made on the channel and speaking about various different ETFs. And this has really just solidified how important and critical utilizing low-cost core ETFs is for long-term success for like 90% of retail investors. By looking at these older videos I've made, well, periodically I'm repeating that utilizing S&P 500 or say total stock market ETFs are really important. And yeah, like they are in most cases over the past decade, these low cost broad market ETFs have actually outperformed most active funds. So let's hope you have some broad market ETFs in your portfolio. All right, so let's get into today's video looking back at five more ETFs, starting with the first one being the Vanguard Russell 2000 index ETF, ticker symbol VTWO. Now I first mentioned this ETF on the channel back around December of 2020, actually. So taking a look at the chart here, it did appreciate uh, quite a bit, around 25% from then on, but it has since receded back down to the point where now it is traded basically flat had you purchased and just held on to those shares since the first time that I mentioned it on the channel. And by the way, for those of you who may not be aware, the Russell 2000 is essentially a broadly diversified index fund that holds essentially around 2,000 small cap American companies, right? So basically the opposite of say the S&P 500 that holds the 500 largest companies in the American stock market. Now, that being said, uh, if you invested in, say, a US total stock market ETF, like this one being the Vanguard VTI, well, it holds around 4,000 companies, right? Uh, which would also include small cap, medium cap, as well as large cap stocks. So that's why you can actually see the stock chart of the total US stock market ETF somewhat resembling the small cap stocks here, where since around the past year, it has been trending relatively sideways. And as a side note, a total US stock stock market ETF like say Vanguard's VTI can also be a fantastic core long-term ETF position that could also represent like an alternative to the S&P 500 if you also want a bit more exposure to those you know small and mid cap positions in the American market and like with any other broad market ETF though you can expect large gains in a short period of time these are long-term holds. Back to VTWO though obviously small cap stocks are pretty much lagging the performance of the general market since around early 20. 21, where I say the S&P 500 is up around 15% during that same time frame, even considering the recent consolidation, whereas VTWO is basically just below flat at this point. Obviously, there are some things to consider here. So let's first take a look at the holdings and allocation. So as we can see here on Vanguard's website, the fund has just over 2,000 holdings, and of the 7.6 billion in assets under management, 3.5% of which are actually held in the top 10 holdings. And this is quite a bit bit different than the narrative that we see in, say, the S&P 500, where the top 10 is actually around 30% of the S&P 500's total weighting. So there's significantly less pull towards the top 10 holdings with the Russell 2000. And we can also see that in terms of the portfolio sector composition right here, that's a lot more diversified across multiple different industries. Now, in terms of the underperformance here in comparison to the large caps, well, let's remember that while it's the large caps really that have uh, been making the largest impact and movements in the stock market over the past couple of years, uh, well, the performance of small cap stocks is usually actually a much better representation of what's going on in the economy itself, right? And so it's completely normal for small caps to be more volatile than mid and large cap stocks just due to their very nature. A lot of these small cap companies also utilize quite a bit more debt 
in order to fuel and sustain their ongoing growth, right? And so when Jerome Powell starts cranking interest rates, well, typically these smaller cap stocks are among the first to really start bleeding. And if we do see a longer term recession, this is also a period where small cap stocks tend to see quite a bit more volatility than larger capitalization companies. That being said, as we can see from this chart right here, small caps overall are trading at lower forward price to earnings ratio levels than during around 90% of the past two decades, which is pretty enlightening really as to how the market's attention is really strictly focused on large and mega cap companies right now, while small caps are trending towards what I would believe to be value territory based on this information right here. And honestly, I could go on about the average historic performance of small cap stocks after periods of underperformance like we're experiencing right now. But in my view, that's just not the goal of a fund like this one in the first place anyways. It's not actively managed. It's not sector specific. This is a broad market fund that I am viewing, right? When I got into this position a year and a half back, well, I was viewing this for a 10, 20 year hold in the first place anyways. And that's really how uh, I think a core ETF like this one should be seen anyways. Bottom line, this is a fund that I still hold in my board portfolio and plan on holding for years. I don't hold a total US stock market ETF. So, you know, in order to complement my larger cap positions, this is an ETF that personally works for my portfolio. And if you're looking for exposure to small cap stocks could potentially work for you as well. Granted that you're okay with high levels of volatility over the years that you're holding it. All right, moving into the second exchange traded fund here. This is actually a Canadian listed ETF that invests in Canadian companies listed on the TSX. And by the way, even if you're American watching this, investing into positions that trade trade outside of the American market can also be a great way to further diversify your portfolio, especially with companies that are located in Canada that has uh, you know, a historic trend of being quite solid and also providing some nice dividend exposure. This ETF though, which is the BMO S&P TSX Capped Composite Index ETF, ticker symbol ZCN, that was a mouthful. Uh, but anyways, this ETF holds uh, 240 positions that are listed all on the Toronto Stock Exchange, uh, which actually happens to be around 95% of the positions that actually even trade on the TSX in the first place. Kind of even crazy to think that there's only uh, that few positions that trade on the TSX. But anyways, that's the Canadian market for you. And just by the nature uh, of Canadian stocks in general, uh, it is mainly concentrated in bank stocks, utilities, energies, uh, with the exception of Shopify, right? Which is kind of like uh, the Canadian gem here, even though it has uh, depreciated quite a bit over the past couple of months. It was even the largest company in Canada for a brief moment, surpassed passing RBC, which is pretty crazy. Now, one of the first times I mentioned this ETF on the channel was around November of 2020. So since then, it's appreciated by, what is it, around 34%, which is great, you know, in a year and a half, essentially. Uh, and that's, once again, pretty much due to the nature of the companies that make up this fund in the first place, being quite rock solid and having recovered extremely nicely over the past two years. What's also kind of interesting about this ETF is that even though it's a broad market Canadian index fund, well, the dividend yield that you're getting is quite high actually on a relative basis. It's at around 2.86%, which you know isn't the highest, but again, this is not a, a dividend focused exchange rate fund. This is just a broad market Canadian ETF. So if we compare this say to a total US stock market ETF, which is kind of the same thing, the dividend yield is quite a bit lower than you know 2.86%. So not only are you getting exposure to great Canadian bank stocks, utility stocks, energy stocks, also with that is coming a nice dividend yield. So overall, ZCN is a great core Canadian holding. If you're looking for exposure to the entire Canadian market, this is an ETF that I hold and I again plan on holding for years to come. There's kind of like a recurring theme here with these core ETFs. These are all long-term positions and even though they're not necessarily providing the highest returns in the shortest period of time, that's not the goal with these ETFs anyways, right? I want to set and forget money into these funds and just see those appreciate over time while I'm focused on other investments that are a lot more active. Now there's no denying that over the next 10, 20 years, there's going to be many hurdles in the growth of the Canadian economy and stock market. But I'm just confident that over the next 20, 30 years, there's going to be massive economic growth in the Canadian market, which is going to be reflected over into the Canadian stock market. Hey, by the way, if you're enjoying today's video, please take a second, drop a like. It really helps the channel grow and also tells me, you know, what types of videos you want me to focus on in the future. Also, if you want to actually take advantage of any of these exchange traded funds, make sure to check 
out the links down below in the description where you can get some free stocks for opening up a well symbol trade account if you're in the us you can also get up to five free stocks with moomoo and they're supposed to come to canada sometime soon so if you're canadian stay on top of that and i'll make sure to make an update on the channel when that time comes and there's a couple other goodies down there that you can look into if you're interested so now let's get into the third exchange trade fund for today's video okay so the third etf that's been previously mentioned on the channel is the first like secondary position that isn't a core etf and that is the iShares global healthcare etf ticker symbol ixj now i first mentioned this etf around mid 2020 if i remember correctly so let's say around june to now it is up just under 30 percent which again is a very nice return uh, for such a short period of time that being said even though this is not what i would consider to be a core etf position right this is very much a sector specific fund uh, well just by the nature of the companies that are held within this fund in the first place there is absolutely no doubt in my mind uh, that this is a fund that's going to continue seeing long-term relatively steady growth actually over the next couple of decades just out of the sheer need uh, for the products and services of the companies that again are held within the fund so let's actually take a look at the holdings themselves as well as the performance so there are currently 116 positions held within this etf uh, that operate in pharma biotech but then also actual healthcare and equipment production right and 70 percent of these companies are actually located in the united states so even though it is yes like a global etf most healthcare innovation happens to be in the u.s in the first place that being said there is exposure to other uh, countries like japan as we can see here switzerland and so on now in regards to the top holdings in this fund there are many recognizable companies like jj &J, pfizer abv and so on and these are all solid companies that have been experiencing long-term growth in demand for their products themselves taking a look for example at johnson and johnson stock growth over the past 10 years now, the reason why I really like a fund like IXJ is because, again, even though this isn't a core position, well, this is a sector-focused ETF that is holding companies that I 100% believe are going to continue experiencing massive growth in demand for their products and services over the next decades to come, right? So instead of trying to hand-select one or two individual uh, companies in the healthcare industry, well, just by holding an ETF like this one, super easy to get exposure to over 100 companies that operate in this space, and you're just going to be riding the tailwinds of the growth of this industry over the next couple of decades, right? So just in the next five years alone, the global healthcare market is expected to grow to $655 billion and just US national healthcare expenditure reached $4.1 trillion in 2020 and is estimated to actually reach $6.2 trillion by 2028. So in five years, which is not a long time, it's expected to increase by roughly 50%. That's massive. So like with pretty much any sector specific ETF, instead of just hand selecting one or two individual companies, well, instead of just betting on one or two companies, well, you're optimistic about the overall growth of that industry as a whole, which, you know, if you're optimistic about the growth of the healthcare industry, an ETF like this one is great. All in all, based on sector performance and expected growth over the next couple of decades, I absolutely stand by this ETF pick, but I will put this out there, you know, this isn't financial advice or anything, nothing's 100% guaranteed, and you should be really just assessing whether or not a secondary position like this one, which again, I don't consider it to be 100% a core position, is suitable for your portfolio, right? This isn't going to be suitable for everyone, but if you do want exposure to the healthcare industry and you're okay with a longer term hold, something like this could be a viable option. Okay, next up, let's take a look at the Schwab Dividend Equity ETF, ticker symbol SCHD. And this is, of course, a dividend focused exchange rate fund and honestly could very well be considered a core ETF. Turns out today we're looking at a a ton of core exchange trade funds that have been mentioned on the channel previously and yeah if it hasn't been made clear well there is a reason why these are called core exchange rate funds doesn't really matter where the market's going in the short term and what type of new news is appearing it really doesn't matter if you're looking at this from a long-term lens and looking to ride through the market ups and downs for long-term growth of your portfolio now this etf does have a low management fee and it has a hundred positions over a hundred positions in the american stock market with top positions like Merck, Coke, Pepsi, Texas Instruments, right? So large cap companies, but that also have that consistency in dividend payments over time. 
Now, one of the first times that we spoke about this ETF was back uh, in early 2021. And since then, it is appreciated by around 23%. Now, nothing major, but again, you know, nice growth. And ultimately, a position like this, you're not expecting massive growth. You're investing in it for that consistency in those dividend payments, really, with also some nice longer term underlying growth in the value of the positions themselves. Make sure to comment down below though for part three of this series if you would like me to go into more detail on some of these dividend focused positions. I'd honestly be happy to do so and we've covered a lot on the channel. And finally though for the fifth ETF position in today's video, let's actually speak about portfolio ETFs which are actually rarely brought to light and even on my own channel, I've only spoken about them around one time I'm pretty sure in a full dedicated video over a year ago because I had quite a few people asking me to comment on these portfolio ETFs like Vigro from Vanguard. Uh, that in Canada and in the United States, there's multiple different options for that as well. Basically what these are is one holding that's essentially like a full portfolio. So you can get say uh, allocation of 80, 20 towards equity versus bonds or more conservative portfolios, but all with one single like ETF holding instead of having to do that yourself. These are also ETFs that are constantly rebalanced. So you might be paying a little bit more in management fees over time, but can be like an alternative to say some of these robo trading platforms like well simple well front and so forth I do want to make this clear though that I've never held a portfolio ETF like this one, right? This is something that a lot of people wanted me to comment on, so I made a full video, uh, but I do not hold one in my portfolio as of right now, and I actually have not in the past either. So let's actually take a look though at uh, the Vigro page on Vanguard's website so we can see what this fund has to offer. Now actually, just before that, let's take a look at the stock chart. So I had made that video back on May 3rd of 2020 actually. So uh, since then, since May 3rd, this fund is appreciated by around 22% had you just held on. It had appreciated up to around 31% and now like pretty much the rest of the market has consolidated down a bit. But regardless, uh, since this is a full portfolio ETF, that's the literal epitome of a set and forget type of exchange traded fund position where literally in your portfolio, you could just hold one single position and it could be this. That is still a great return, all things considered. So as we can see on the website though, yeah, this is a growth ETF portfolio and so it has a management fee that is a little bit higher at 0.24% than say if you held just an S&P 500 ETF, but you have the added advantage here of it constantly being rebalanced based on the allocation split of 20% fixed income and 80% give or take equity positions, right? So going down and taking a look a bit more here uh, at the actual holdings themselves, well, we can see that there are right around 14,000 stocks held within this fund and around 18,000 bonds held within this fund. Now that being said, there aren't all of these individual positions held within the fund. It actually holds other exchange traded funds, like for example, the US total stock market ETF, the Canadian all cap ETF, developed all cap. So all of these combined equates up to tens of thousands of bond as well as equity positions. Now here's really the ironic thing about an exchange traded fund like this one though, in a video where I'm going back to previous videos I've made over the past couple of years and speaking about these exchange traded funds. The goal of an ETF like this one anyways would never be uh, to invest invest for a one year, one year and a half period in the first place. This is a type of exchange rate fund that you would hold for hopefully 10, 20 years and write out the overall growth of, in this case, basically the global economy and the global stock market. And so although I can't sit here and say Vigro is a portfolio ETF that's suitable for you or any of these other allocation split ETFs, what I can say is that more than ever, it's really important for retail investors, if you're watching this, take the time, sit down and think about who you are as a person and how old you are, what your income looks like, what the goals are with your investment portfolio over the next 20, 10, 20 years, 30 years even, and really just identify what you're after as an investor. Block out all the noise of what everyone else is doing and just identify how you should be constructing your portfolio from an equity versus fixed income standpoint, and then go from there adding individual ETFs, or maybe if it is right for you, utilizing a one fund portfolio like this one, right? More than ever, I think over the past two years as a lot of retail investors have flooded the market and have purchased multiple different or hundreds even of individual stocks getting in and out of them, I think it is more important than ever 
for people to identify what their goals are as an investor and just craft an actual portfolio that makes sense for them. The point is here, even though it's really fun to individually analyze companies and try to select specific stocks that you think are gonna outperform the market, the bulk of most retail investors' portfolios should be made up of low cost set and forget exchange rate funds. It's not fancy, it's not fun necessarily, but this really is the best way to actually achieve long-term growth and success by taking advantage of consistent returns. A lot of people underappreciate how much over 10, 20 years, a seven to 12% growth rate can compound into massive amounts of capital, especially when you're working on increasing your income and just pouring that right back into your portfolio. So anyways, on a separate note, next month, I'm going to travel for four weeks. So I'm actually prepping a ton of content right now. That's going to be releasing on the channel over the next couple of weeks and over the course of June. Make sure to stay tuned for all that content. It's golden long-term content that's going to be extremely valuable. So make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell button to be notified of all of those new awesome videos that are going to be released. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to smash the like button and check out all of the free links down below in the description where you can open certain brokerage accounts and get a bunch of free stocks, free money, and so forth. So with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.